Okay, guys, I have to apologize because I was just on, had you guys on for like 40 minutes just blabbing, just like talking, just talking, just unended, just all me, just, it was ridiculous, right? You probably like, yo, this girl is too much. Um, so Dr. Antoine Martin is out in California, okay? So he has a different time than we do out here. So um, they're one hour behind. So he's going to be joining us um, right now. I was like, hey, what happened? You know, he's like, what do you mean? I'm out in Cali. It's it's only seven something. I'm like, geez. Um, so he's about to join us. And we're going to have this conversation. We're going to talk to him about all this good stuff. Um, hopefully he joins in. We can get this conversation started right away. I definitely won't keep you guys. I won't keep you guys waiting for sure. Um, we're excited to hear all about him. He all about him and his journey. He is um, gonna give us the four one one. Give us the scoop on how he got started, and um, we're excited to hear about it. We're excited, right? So, let's let me see if I could invite him here to come on. There he is. There he is. Okay. All right. Perfect. So, hi, how are you? <laughs> all right. Doing all right. How about yourself? Good. And I have to apologize again. That was totally my mistake. I should have asked you. I was assuming that everybody's from this great city, Toronto, but I realize that you're <laughs> from out there in California. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself and let us know who you are. Yes. Uh, um, Dr. Antoine Martin, just a uh, young man who grew up on the East Coast, moved to the West Coast and uh, started in Minnesota, served uh, at my local church for over 20 years and uh, working with uh, young people college professor went on to school and got my degrees and uh, been help people you know and uh, do my best to work with the community at large to try to be impact on some type of way which is our turkey giveaway this past weekend so uh, making trying to help people during the holidays and you know it's what we do we share we share we love we help you know Awesome. Awesome. So um, how did you get started? Like, I know you said you have a background in the church, but um, like where, what led you to want to actually lead in ministry? Uh, I was uh, a PK. Um, I grew up in it and uh, I learned PK is preacher's kid for those who don't know. <laughs> and I grew up in a time where, uh, where, you know, my family was kind of really engaged in in the uh, ministry. And then I also had an opportunity, once I got older, to develop my own relationship with the Lord. I uh, went to college, came out to California, actually, to play football. And I played college football for uh, some years, and I thought I was going to go pro. I was excited about playing football. And I had a career-ending injury, and uh, it kind of refocused me back to get my life on a straight and narrow and trying to do the things that would be productive uh, in life, uh, kind of rebalancing myself, reconditioning my mind, getting things together to make my life better. So it was it was a step by step, but uh, I learned as I went, you know, and grew into what I do now, you know, uh, try to share through various means. Um, I'm somebody that loves media, so I have a team that works with me, and uh, we produce videos and, uh, you know, service uh, people at large um, with uh, motivational and interactive media um, that makes people think about things in life and hopefully helps them to grow into better people, you know, and think about ways they could advance themselves in various ways. So that's what I do, you know. I just I, I love being a light. Uh, we went out this past weekend, uh, um, my wife and I, and we uh, gave it out, you know, food to people that were homeless and ended up here in California. You know, everywhere is 
different, right? So California is hot all the time out here, right? So <laughs> we asked somebody. Y'all lucky <laughs> out there. <laughs> uh, but you, know, you, you see people out here because the weather is so beautiful. People many times are caught on the street and not able to, you know, you know they, they, they try to make it on the street. So uh, we, we do what we can to try to help, you know, give food to those that are in need, things like that. And make a difference in people's lives. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a work. It's a it's a consistent work, but it's something that you know if you do it, and uh, you know you you go home feeling better about something the day. So you know, that's what you try to do. Wow. Outside of lives, you know. <laughs> For sure, yeah. So, like, what are some of the biggest messages you try to get across to um, the people that you are connecting with? Uh, definitely that uh, there's hope, there's life out there for people. You know, so many people are sitting around thinking that, you know, everything's over and, you know, you don't have the opportunity to really make an impact. Um, but there's so much that you can do. You know, there's so many avenues that you can go in to not just better your life, but better other people's lives. Uh, I was, um, my, my father uh, finished, school a long time ago and he went back to school and like he was telling me about going back to school saying go back go back he went back to school and at 60 years old he got his doctorate degree you know what I mean but it's something that you know people think my time is up I don't need to keep going you know no way you know no matter I don't care what's going on in your life there's always an opportunity for you to you know do something to better yourself right and do something to achieve more be greater and uh, the 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 message I put out there for young and old, you know, uh, whether I'm being I'm blessed to, you know, been blessed to be on shows like TBN, Praise, uh, and, and things like that, and uh, other broadcasts, whether on the radio or whatever it is. I always tell people, you cannot allow life to find you without, or don't find, don't let life find you not making. Uh, strives to be progressive. Everything about your life got to be something that advances you to be a better, better you. You know, better at what you do. You know, grow in some type of way. Go back to school if you, you know, or get a, get 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 somebody to help you with your, you know, business plan. You know, do something to help you grow. You know, not, not just that way, and also spiritually. You know, build a relationship with the Lord. You know, learn how to pray, learn how to talk to the Lord, learn how to be responsible with your time. You know, don't spend all your time on social media, you know, make, make, some, make that time work, make that day work because every day is a, is a blessing. Every day is a gift, right? What can you do to make your days better, right? What can you do to make your days great? And that, that's, that's essential, you know? Mm -hmm. Um. So of course we're in 2020 and People aren't always so keen to want to hear God's word. So how do you go around? Like, how do you make it digestible for people? Yeah, I've been, uh, that, that's a big piece, right? Because nobody, I, nobody really wants to listen to somebody for like 30 minutes talk about anything nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> if I put something over 30 minutes, it's like one view and one possible view, right? Somebody just scanned it for 10 seconds, right? So you're not going to do that. Um, it's all about time. I think the time factor is essential. Uh, if you can find a way, this is what the Lord gave me. This is, this is the method that he, he kind of inspired me to think about. If you can give people as much information as possible and the least amount of time as possible, you can make a bigger impact and if you sit there filibustering for, that's what we do in this, in the, we talk about in the States, you know, Congress, they do filibusters out here. You filibuster for about, you know, 30 minutes about, you know, pontificating on what the, you know, circumference of the rationale, you know, all that stuff, you don't have to do all that. Make your information concise. And uh, I, my, my goal is to make it within 60 seconds. I try to produce uh, media that is impactful, that 
somebody, if you give me 60 seconds, I'll give you a lot of information. And if I can give them a lot of information that inspires them to learn more about uh, faith, to learn more about love, to learn more about being a better person, then maybe that 60 seconds can help change their lives. 60 seconds can do a lot when done right, right? Um, so that, that's, that's my goal. I try to keep it within, every time I do my communications, I do not make them longer than 60 seconds. Uh, 60 seconds is the, the length. When it hits 60, it's over. I'm not going to see it any longer than that. And the only reason for that is because I, I know when I look at videos, I probably don't even look at 60 seconds. But <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that I utilize to help make, videos reach people and it's not just the six seconds it's also the fact that i want you to feel like hey when i'm giving you this information you're watching it you're 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 visualizing it i know a few things work right so some people are auditory listeners some people are kinesthetic listeners i know the different types of you know listeners that we have out there one of the most important things when somebody is listening is that they visualize so when you listen, you hear, but when you visualize, you not just hear, but you see it here. Those, that's two, basically the most powerful ways of communicating, hearing and seeing at the same time. So my video has to be something that is fast, quick, 30, 60 seconds, but it also has to be something that makes a visual connection for that person. So when they're seeing it, they're like, oh, okay. Something has to click. While they're seeing it and they're hearing it, it matches, right? And it looks great and it connects with them. Uh, my uh, daughters were, my daughters were, was just in a uh, Netflix documentary um, on uh, a young lady out here in California that was uh, shot in a grocery store, killed in a grocery store, African-American young lady. And uh, the documentary is not your basic documentary it's not a, it's, it's about 20 minutes long they condensed the entire life of this girl in about 20 the whole incident what happened in about 20 minutes uh but they use so many visual effects like you're watching it you're not seeing people you're just seeing visual effects uh um, and, and i promise you you're looking at it like man what is going on but it's connecting to you the whole time like the whole time you're looking at it and you're just focused in and you're listening to the story because in reality, um, and Jesus, I believe Jesus did the same thing. When, you, when, you're, when you're looking at something, when you're seeing something take place and you're hearing the story at the same time, you're, what you hear is so much more uh, impactful to the person that's listening. Like, check this out. Let me give you an example. Jesus healed people, and you see four Gospels that talk about him healing people, right? But mm -hmm. in the Gospels, when he's healing people, three of the synoptic Gospels, they all see things a little differently because right. you see it, but when you see it and hear it and it's powerful and impactful, it changes everything. You're like, oh, man, I, did I just see that? One person said he gave him this, but they all see the same thing. It's just about how powerful the visualization is in connection to what's being said audibly. So um, videos have to, you, you, I think anybody's ministry has to be that, right? You can't do fuzzy videos. You can't have videos that's like, you know, uh, buffering in the middle, right? You got to be clear. <laughs> Folks, they, they ain't listening. One minute of that, they like, I'm out of here, right? <laughs> but it has to be true definition all those things have to go and, and it's really sad that it's deduced to that but that's in order to keep people's attention you got to do that i'm not saying you're not powerful if you got buffeting it's just people might not you know and that's the problem you want to be able to reach more people so you got to be clear in that and that's one of the things that um, i try to master in uh the videos that i produce i want to make sure that people hear it i mean make sure that people see it and uh, make sure when they're watching it they're being impacted by it it's like okay this makes sense it kind of resonates with me right and uh last but not least i know i'm talking a lot but he asked me the question so i'm answering it <laughs> last but not least is that topics have to have to be relevant um it's it's like hard to make connection with people with topics that have 
no relevancy. I can't connect with you if I'm talking to you about something that is not important to you at all. I don't care how visually powerful it is. I mean, and, and in the church world, we often go back to topics that are King James Version topics. I'll, I'll give you, this is an example I use, right? King James Version is the old English topics, right? Thou art holy, right? And you put that topic on there. You think somebody going to watch that? They're like, no way, right? You need to pick up a message Bible and read it there and then rewrite that topic. You know, whatever it is, it just needs to be something that makes sense that's relevant to the people because you're not going to, you want to reach them. The goal is to reach people. It's not to preach to the same audience all the time. The goal is to help people, right? We want to help people. If I can help people, then let me work at my strategy so I can really be a blessing to people um, and, 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 and get topics that make sense. Sometimes you need to go to the lab and look at what you wrote and then say, this topic don't really work or this idea, this thought is not really going to help people. It's more for me than for everybody else, right? And you got to go back and look at it again and try to fix it. So those things are kind of important when it comes to how you impact people, how you change the narrative when you're sharing media, right? Media is powerful in and of itself, but you can't be impactful if you're only sharing media that resonates with you and not with everybody else. True, very true. Um, so like, when you're out there now, what are some of the messages that you find people are gravitating to? Um, some of the best ones is the simple ones, like love. Okay. I did. I just did one on. I so I'm a professor, and I, I've taught. You know, I taught, taught social sciences, so I teach psychology class. A lot of psychology classes. I've taught a lot of them, I should say. And uh, one of the topics that I did that was one the most profound was I talked about the mind how powerful the mind is and what your mind does. Uh, I talked about Michelle Obama dealing with uh, bouts of depression and when she had talked about that, she had, she had confessed to herself. She said, I was dealing with low grades of depression, being at home all this time during the quarantine. And mm -hmm. talked about those things. And I promise you, people were like, I needed this. I needed to hear about people dealing because I thought I was all by myself dealing with this stuff. I thought it was only struggling. And uh, that's what people think, you know, and, and it's a real thing. Like, and I think I'm out here struggling by myself. You know, this is, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot and uh, I don't know how to deal with it. So I kind of gave some solutions within my 60 second time frame. I talked to you about, about how to regulate your mind how to regulate your thoughts, not your mind, your thoughts. Because your thoughts, uh, if you don't regulate them, then you'll find yourself thinking things that are, you know, inappropriate or things that will lead you down the wrong path. So you have to regulate your thoughts. Like, that's something that most people don't take account of because thoughts are innate and we don't even think about how they enter in and how they are, uh, acted upon. We just think they just come and we just do it and we just react. Uh, in reality, to the wrong people, you talk to the wrong people, you watch the wrong stuff on TV, you talk, you speak to the wrong, you watch the wrong social media feeds. That's how those thoughts come in your mind. And then you, and you react on the wrong stuff. So you got to clear your mind of all that foolishness. You got to clear your mind of all that nonsense and stay focused on those things that are pure, those things that are right, those things that are lovely, those things that are good. You know, you got to think on some good stuff. If you don't, you're going to be finding yourself in a pickle mentally, you know, psychologically, you, know, you won't be able to focus. So um, those type of thoughts is what I put out there. Those type of messages, what, I, what I've seen resonate big time, how people think, how they react to things, um, how you love people. How do you love in an environment like this, when you see people every day, you, I know we say we love people, but how do you keep on loving them every day when you're stuck in the house with them all day, right? And uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. People have been struggling with uh, really loving on people, you know what I mean? And uh, doing it with a sincerity and a genuine desire to love on them. You know, we can say it, but it doesn't always 
play out because you're seeing that person every day. <laughs> Do I still love them? <laughs> Am I just tolerating them? Right? And uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's a lot to it's a lot to to deal with. But you know, those type of topics have been really resonating, and I'm going to be doing a lot more on that. I'm going to be doing a lot more on that because I want to I want to I want to really uh, help people during this time. It looks like we're going to be on this pandemic watch for a little bit longer. It doesn't like it's letting up right away, right? So how are we coping? You know, if I can help people cope through this time, then I feel good. I feel like I've done some good, you know, and we all have to. We're all, we're all coping, right? But 100%. you want to cope with uh, positive uh, motives, you know, not coping, doing things that might not be benefiting you because you know we'll come out of this one way or another but when we come out how are we gonna come out we're gonna come out better we're gonna come out needing to drink <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna need to figure come out you know what i'm saying and i don't th i don't think it's beneficial to come out thinking you need to drink you probably need to come out better you probably need to come out with a you know a better mindset you know your heart fixed a little bit you know just you know work on some stuff so you can be better at the end of it mm -hmm. Yeah, you're just hitting some real serious points, especially about uh, the mindset. You know, mindset is huge. It yeah. is something that we all need to make sure that we're working on those thoughts. But how do we work on our thoughts effectively? Because um, capturing sometimes, you know, training your brain to, you know, organize your thoughts and tossing away negative thoughts and making sure you're dismissing them or rebuking them or whatever, that can't, that's not always so easy. So what are no. some like tips that you give? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the main things that I think of when, I think of when, we, when we talk about the mindset, three, three main points that really resonate. Most people think in terms of this, they think about their mind. One thing is your mind is not a cesspool so the first thing you got to do is you got to not allow certain things to live in your mind you can't give them can't let them if they ain't paying rent don't let them stay in there they ain't paying no rent you know that's what, that's what my my mom used to say you know my parents my mom and dad say stuff like you know ain't nothing staying in this house unless it's paying rent when i grew up i grew up on the east coast <laughs> you know ice they come around and my parents say, ain't nobody staying in here if they ain't paying rent, right? You know, they ain't not going to stay in here. Boom, no ants, no nothing, right? And and yeah. our minds are the same way. Like, we should, we got to stop letting stuff live in our minds. Like, people are going to sleep upset and frustrated and keeping that stuff in your mind. Whatever don't pay rent, don't stay in your mind. And what's the, what's the paying rent? It pays forward. It gives you strength. It gives you ability. It gives you you know, some type of assistance or help. But if it's not helping you to be better, let that stuff go. Let that stuff go. You got to you gotta think in terms of your mind being a place where all your focus, right, your growth is coming through here. But it's not going to come through there if you don't learn how to set your mind on good stuff. So one of, one of the main things that you got to do is first clear your mind of all that stuff, uh, Faith causes you got you got to understand that faith causes the mind of a man to become restful and positive. It's already been proven. Uh, they did a study uh, in the um, with the uh, 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 group of psychiatrists did a study, and they found that the people that rest on faith that are faith related that pray and things like that, they saw a significant decrease in the amount of stress-related issues and the amount of uh, anxiety issues and the amount of, you know, uh, 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 horrible reactive c problems that people have in life based on the fact that they focus their mind. Their mind is set on things of faith. Their mind is in aligned with their faith or they pray or they meditate, whatever it might be, but they find a way to get their mind free. So that's one thing you got to do it, right? Because you're going to, you're going to face, we're all going to face things in life. That's going to make us, especially at a time like this, make us very uncomfortable right now. It's all about how am I negotiating with my uncomfortable places? Cause I don't care who you are or where you live in. I don't care if your name is 
Will Smith or uh, 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 Michael uh, Jordan, you're living in the biggest house in the world, you're still dealing with discomfort. Or if you're living in the smallest home, the, in the projects, wherever, you, you're still dealing with discomfort because your mind is trying to negotiate this new normal, right? So you have to keep your mind clean, all right? You have to keep your mind clean. You Most important, you got to set your mind on positive things you cannot have your mind focused on negativity or negative thoughts or negative people right uh, negative people will destroy your mindset they will totally they don't care you know people that talk negatively they don't care how bad you feel when they get done talking to you i just want you to know everybody they don't care when they get done talking to you they're not looking around saying oh you okay no when they leave they just feel like they just dumped on you and they walking away so yeah. you got to learn how to stop talking to negative people. That's one of the main reasons we have negative thoughts, because we talk to a lot of negative people. Um, I was listening to a podcast, uh, a video the other day. Somebody was talking about how uh, they don't even listen. When people start talking negative, they stop talking to them. They just stop. They just stop. No, no, no need to continue the conversation. Thank you. We'll talk later. They end the conversation and be about their business. I think that's the most powerful thing you can do. You cannot continue to come. Once they start saying, oh, yeah, but that don't look like it's going to work. No, okay, we'll talk later. <laughs> you know what? I got to call. I got to call yeah. Jesus. I'll talk to you later, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to talk to you about at that point. We need to keep talking. Got nothing good that you're going to right? So it's, it's kind of important we get, you know, get our – Get get away from people that talk craziness, foolishness. We don't need you. We don't need you telling us about what is it going to work, what doesn't look like it's going to work. You know, it's it's kind of crazy. Um, and, and, and of course, you can get a little deeper into that because psychology is, you know, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, phys, uh, psychological issues, psychological problems. When you deal with the psychology of people, it's like the study of the mind. Right, the study of the mind is the soul, the soul of man. That's how our mind works. Our mind is that is that soul. It's that inner being, that inner process that we go through. Right. So, your soul, your spirit is strong. Your spirit, if you're connected with God, your spirit is strong. But your soul is only going to produce what you feed it. That's the problem. Your spirit, if you have the spirit of God, you're strong. But your soul, which is your mind, your, that soulish realm, it's looking for anything. And it's definitely going to lean towards negativity if you feed it that, right? So we have to be clear on what's the positive that we're going to feed ourselves. Um, and most things we don't even need to talk about. We don't even need to deal with. Um, I was looking through my news feed on Facebook to, just today. And I looked at the stories. Mostly every story that I read was something crazy about somebody doing something wrong. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, it's like, I don't need to see all this. And I don't mind social media. I, I think it's a good benefit when used properly. But most times we find ourselves in the negative zone. And then we want to be positive when we want to be. You just can't bounce back like that. You're not going to bounce into positivity uh, just because you want to. You got to feed yourself positive thoughts. And then It'll be all. It'll be just what you regurgitate. It'll be only what you talk about. You know the positive of life. If you're not staying focused on the right stuff, don't worry. The wrong stuff is gonna come out your mouth, right? So, 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 so it, it's clear. It should be clear to all of us that we have to keep our mind renewed on positive things. Of course, I do things. My day, my routine. I'm getting up in the morning. I've been finding myself listening to the Bible. I, so, I, I the Bible says. Bible says, how can you hear uh, without, the Bible talks about you need to hear the word of God. You need to listen to the word of God. So I I purposefully listen to the Bible. You know, most people read the Bible. I don't mind reading it, but I take a lot of time listening to the Bible. I'll play the Bible and listen to it and listen to it because I want to hear the word of God. I want to be able to hear it so I can say, man, I heard that message. It's, I can hear what he's saying. You want to hear those things. Um, that's essential. I, I, I do other things, you know, I can, you know, read and 
scavenging through and all that stuff, but I want to hear what the Lord is telling me. I really do. And uh, that's essential for me. Um, I'll pray. I believe in prayer. Prayer time is essential. Uh, but I want to hear what he's saying. I want to listen to the Bible. Uh, and then other things that, you know, work for me, uh, you know, I make sure that I am staying engaged with uh, my girls. You know, if you have a family, I have an all-girls dorm. It's me, my wife, two girls. I get no say-so in my house. So I just, I just, you know, but I, I, I keep in contact with them, <laughs> engage with all and, uh, you know, they, they always have something for me to do. So, you know, even if I don't want to do it, they're going to make me do it. So you know, it's a reality that we're in this situation right now. But, you know, keep your mind on positive stuff and look at the positive. Like, if you're still alive, two weeks was in, in America, we have 250,000 people plus that have passed because of this pandemic, right? You know, look at we got to look at the positive. What's the positive? We're still here, right? I'm still here. You still here? All that stuff. You know, we we making it. We live it. You know, mm -hmm. and if we gonna make it, then we gotta be responsible. You know, we gotta be appreciative of the blessings. Each day is a blessing. Each moment is a blessing. Each opportunity is a blessing. And uh, how are we making those blessings work? Right and not being mad at the world because we're in a situation where right negativity is not going to get us anywhere right now. Got to stay positive. Thank God for everything. So, like, because right, I I hundred percent agree with you. And sometimes you be talking to people and they are just so keen on wanting to talk about the negative. Right? They want to. Be like, well, you know, this happened. It's, we're going through this right now. And, oh, today I had a rough day. And it's like, how do you just, like, I know it's like you got to just end it. But how do you do it in a way that's not almost hurtful to their feelings? Because I feel like everybody's super sensitive in this time as well. Like, if you don't want it, if you're, if you're like, you know, stay positive, then they're like, you're like, what do you mean stay positive? Like, how do you just stay positive? You know what I mean? Like, it's a hard balance. How do you maintain that balance? I, I think the balance is because you don't want to offend people, but your priority has to be yourself. You have to know your limits. So right. what, would be, what would be the benefit if I didn't hurt their feelings, but I went home and I was depressed? There's no <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they they yeah. feel good, but I'm upset. I'm like, man, yeah. I'm not happy about things right now. So we yeah. got to figure out. A, I can't. I can't allow myself. I have to know my limitations. I have to know. And and sometimes that's where you cut people off. Hey, you know what? Yeah. Understand what you're saying, but I can't handle this conversation right now. Let's hold off on it, right? And know your limitations. I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna take somebody else's junk and just keep on taking it. After a while, it's going to overwhelm you. So it's probably best to know your limitations and say, you know what? Mentally, I cannot take these conversations. We're going to limit yeah. this conversation. I can't keep going like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so you are pretty committed to what you're doing. Like, um, how do you stay committed, stay focused on your goals and what your, you know, your aspects, what you really want to do? Uh, I, I think the main goal for me is just knowing my, I, in this day and in this time, you have to know who's you are and in what way your gifts can benefit who you are. So what I figured out is that I know over my lifetime, I figured out a, a, some of my gifts. Uh, I think I have more gifts than what I figured out, but I think I figured them out. Then the other side of that is that I think I know now more than ever that uh, my identity is totally wrapped up in God. So I know now that since I know who God is and I know who he is to me, 
then my life has to mimic his plan for my life. Um, it's a deep dive. I know a lot of people don't want to take the deep dive because they want to stay shallow. They want to, you know, they might not want to, you know, go all in. But it's a beautiful thing when you go in with him because he's going to teach you some stuff about yourself and make you better. So that's where I, that's where I, that's where my my life is. You know, it's in being closer to him, and learning him more and more, being being a good son, being a good child. You know, like if he's your father, why not be a good son? You know, why not be a good daughter? Why not be someone that he would be proud of? Right? We hear about that story of when Jesus came out of the water and he said, you know, this is my son and who I'm well pleased. Right? But why would you want him to say that about you too? Right? I want him to say that about me. I know my name is not Jesus, but I I am the son of God. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be. I want him to be I wanna be that. I want him to say good faith, man. You you doing all right. I like him. You know, we well, you know, any parents that got children, you know, you know, when them kids come in right now, I really like my child. Some days you like, oh, they my job. <laughs> right now I ain't like yeah. it, right? So you want to be liked by that. It's 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 a it's a it's an ongoing process. You learn as you go, but I really want to make sure that he likes me and we have a good relationship together. So mm -hmm. The time is running short, though. I got a, another yeah. coming up, and I know you got to go too. It's all good. I just want to thank you again for you know. First of all, I want to apologize again for the the timing there. Um, sure. I appreciate you though. We did show your video on Saturday for the the international summit, which was great. I appreciate you. Yeah, it worked out. It went really nicely. So um, we'll definitely keep in touch. Um, I'd like to know more about your books and your writing, so send me something by email so I could check them out when I can. Yeah, All let's right. do it again, for real. For sure, for sure, anytime. All right, you All take right. care. Have yourself a great evening. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. No problem, thank you. All right, good night. Wow, guys, that was great. Um, so much great information, right? So much great information um, coming from California, California. So we had a little time difference. Of course, we're out here in Toronto, Ontario. So um, we were here at eight o'clock and it is 830 over there in Cali right now. So we were hour ahead. And um, so we were a little bit early for the party. But at the end of the day, we got everybody all warmed up. It was a great, great conversation. Um, he definitely dropped a lot of a lot of gems uh, for us to to take in to really think about. And um, I love his, you know, informational pieces, the way he does his videos, um, you know, talking about key things that we really need to maximize on, especially during this time. So we have to focus on the mindset and we need to keep our mindset in the right frame. Like it's, it's super important to make sure that we're keeping our mindset locked and key to a certain uh, type of way of thinking. And we cannot like push ourselves outside of that. Uh, it doesn't matter what anything, what else is going on with anybody else. We've got to like train our brains to stay aligned in what we're thinking um, and make sure that the thinking is positive. It's right. It's the right way of thinking and it's in line with what God would have you have done for your life so huge 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 one of the key points he said was your mind is not a cesspool like hello your mind is not a cesspool do not let people or anything in your mind if they are not paying rent and paying rent in your mind doesn't necessarily mean they're paying you cash money it means that it's helping you to be a better person so if that those thoughts or if that conversation or if that tv show or if that reel on instagram or if that post or whatever is not benefiting you positively um putting out a positive impact in your life 
then honestly, it shouldn't shouldn't be there. You can't allow it to take up space in your life, in your mind. And that's a real thing. That's a real talk. You know what I'm saying? So um, gave us some tips too on when people are having that conversation and they're talking about people or they're judging people or they're being negative or they're talking about themselves in a negative way. You know what I mean? Or what's going on if they're always complaining or always talking just foolishness. You definitely have to end the conversation. And um, as he said, sometimes we've just got to end the conversation and not really worry too much about how that person is feeling. Because at the end of the day, you cannot soak up that negativity. You've got to let it rest with that individual who is who is trying to spill it onto you because it's not yours. It's, it's not yours, right? So when you want to stay positive, it's hard to keep your mind in a positive place, especially right now with everything that's going on. But it has a very huge impact on what you are allowing in your mind. So the things that you're watching, the things that you're seeing, um, the, pe- the company that you're keeping, what you're reading, I mean, like the list can go on and on and on. So we've got to make sure that we are we are holding tight to positivity and making sure that we can um, we can thrive because at the end of the day, it's easy to talk negative. It's easy to gravitate to negativity. It's super easy. Like it's it's really easy, especially where we are right now. It's easy to say like, you know what, I had a stressed out day or or this or that or, you know, it's it's really easy to do that and have a whole conversation with with one of your girls or your your friend or your husband or your wife or your significant other, whoever, your coworker about something negative. It's really easy, but you've got to train your brain into doing what is positive, pushing yourself to make sure that you are, you know, in line with that positivity. So I definitely will be bringing him on for another conversation. I feel like we just got warmed up. Uh, The next time I'll make sure that we are on target with the time because California has a different time than Ontario, obviously. Hey, you know what? I don't know why I thought he was from California. Toronto like I I have him on Instagram I've had him on for a while and I've reached out to him before talking to him I never thought that I did not know he was from California like that's my bad I am so sorry like I I honestly had no idea he was from Cali but um He's not from Toronto, but he's got mad gems, definitely mad, mad information. He's a professor. He's an author. He's a writer. He's a a preacher. um, And he's talking about that good conversation. He's talking about the right stuff, you know, and uh, he's got jokes, too. So that all helps it come in together. And and it, it helps you to digest the message easier as well when something is relatable you know what I mean and he talked about things being relatable as well um conversation that that's how you really can connect with people is when you have that relatable conversation so I'm really glad that I ended up reaching out to him after I did my 40 minute live by myself right I ended up reaching out to him like hey you know um I'm not sure what had happened and then I just asked him I'm like are you in Toronto and then he said no I'm in Cali and I'm like okay Alicia that is why you didn't get a chance to you know what I mean like hello that was where the the uh, communication breakdown it was it was all me I'm here thinking like you know you're from Toronto we're on the same time frame but it all worked itself out anyways it's just 9 40 around now so we had a really good conversation I am so super grateful that he was able to come on he was also a part of our summit he didn't do a live segment which next time I'm thinking I may want to ask him if he's willing to do a live segment because he seems like he has so much information um, on this topic I would love to hear more about it love to hear how he presents it in in one of his courses perhaps um, you know, because he is a professor. So I would definitely be reaching out to him for the next summit to see if he could present something. Um, But he really spoke uh, a lot about love, um, about regulating your thoughts, and about coping. So those are three things that especially right now we're dealing with. um, And we're dealing with making sure that we maintain the love and, and making it sincere, right? Because we're seeing the same people every day. We're in the house with the same people every single day. We're not allowed to leave. You know what I mean? Our situations have changed. We want to make sure that we're still showing sincere love. Um, maybe it's going to look different. 
Uh, maybe it'll be a little bit different, but we have to make sure that we're still putting it all out there um, to make sure that our significant others still know that we love them, to make sure our children still know that we love them, to make sure, you know, our family and friends um, still know that we love them. So you've got to reach out to the family and friends, to those people that are within your household, and then those people are, that are outside of your household. Um, you want to make sure that they still know that you care. Um, you know, uh, we have to do a lot of calling around. I know that texting is big or sending emojis and all that good stuff. I mean, they're really nice, but it's always nice to actually physically hear that voice at the the other phone line for somebody to call to check up on you. So um, especially during this time, we want to make sure that we're doing that. Um, but keeping the conversation clean and keeping the conversation positive is really important as well. Um, and not being afraid to let other people know that you're on a different uh, wavelength. If you are on that, you know, strict positivity thing, you just got to keep it positive and eventually people will pick up on um, your silence or your exiting the conversation. And he gave us a good one. You know what I mean? You have another call coming in. It's Jesus. Jesus you got to go call on Jesus because you can't deal with it. Oh my gosh. He had me in stitches. Okay. Anyways, guys, um, I appreciate you hopping back on. It was a great conversation and we'll definitely um, follow up in the post tomorrow. You'll definitely see um, a bit more about like you know all of the the write-up on um on dr antoine martin but he's he's definitely a blessed individual i appreciate him um uh and his his information that he had passed on today to us so make sure you guys remember that um the soul is the mind and the mind only produces what you feed it okay the mind only produces what you feed it. So we have to make sure that we're continuously feeding our minds positive things. We want to be surrounded by positivity. We want to be looking at positive things. We want to be hearing positive things. And social media can make it a little bit difficult. So scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, we're seeing a lot of, you know, positive, negative, positive, negative, and sometimes more negative than positive when we're scrolling. So we want to make sure that we are uh, maybe limiting our time to social media. That's also something that I'm going to be implementing into my 10 day um, challenge coming up December, December 10th to 20th. So if you are available to join me for that um, push through to end strong 2020 um, and then like fly into 2021, I'm doing a 10 day challenge um, December 10th to December 20th. And really we have to, the, a part of it is going to be limiting our social media because social media is tricky. Sometimes it could be, it's super beneficial. You've learned a lot of things. You've met a lot of different people on social media. It can be used for great, but it can also be, um, a place of comparison, a place of, um, negativity, a place of, Un, ungodly behavior you know what I mean um, just to be just to put it out there and be real so we've got to learn to limit our our social media intake and maybe limit um, the things that you're watching on social media like we just got to we just have to right we're going into 2021 strong we're going into 2021 with a super healthy mindset and a super positive mindset because we can thrive we can make it through anything we can do anything that we put our minds to right so we've got to surround ourselves and make sure we're placing ourselves in that position to walk in the wealth that the lord has in store for us right we've got to do it we can do that okay so life has to your life has to mimic god's plan for your life like he just had so many gems just just so many too many too many gems. All right, guys. Anyways, I'm going to let you go. It is 944 here in Toronto, Ontario. I'm going to start speaking like this because this is a global platform. You know that we deal, I'm dealing with global edification right here, 416 Love. So make sure if you are interested, I've got my course coming up and I, I'm telling you, he's got some tips that I'm going to be taking to put into my course. You know, I'm revamping my course to make it um, more digestible. I'm going to be compiling it into maybe a one day couple of hour course because I want to make sure that I'm reaching the right amount of people to get the uh, right content. And as he said today, um, you know, we got to minimize the amount of information that we're putting into uh, the message and making sure that it's digestible for people to want to take it in. Okay, so 
that's what I'm going to be doing 2021. You definitely are going to see MS 101 come back out again for you guys to take the course. And that's Mindset 101. Um, I also have my book, Figure It Out. When you join the course, you get a free copy of the book signed, of course, by yours truly. Um, and then, you know, we're excited about everything else that we have coming up in 2021. So make sure you look out for all that information. Um, and we will see you at the at next week, next week, right here on Instagram, 416love with uh, what's the 411, right? Okay, next week, I'll see you guys. Have a good one.